Hey, what's going on, miners? Mining King here. Today, we're going to be talking about proof of useful work and what you need to know about it. So, let's get right into it. I got my coffee here. It's Sunday morning. Figured I'd do a video on this since I haven't done a video on Flux in quite some time. Um, you know, I love the Flux project. I love what they're doing. I, I, I love the team, man. Great group of guys. It's it's amazing what they're doing, right? But if you missed that Saturday Night Live last night with Jeff Key being a special guest, you may want to rewatch that because he drops tons and tons of information about things about proof of useful work, right? So he did say that they expect a a download or I would say a, a working alpha for people to test. It won't actually be like the actual real thing, but it'll be like a way for people to test and I'm assuming benchmark and see what their hardware actually performs at, right? So that's that's great. And that's gonna be coming out, I think he said before mining disrupt, which is July twenty fifth or twenty sixth. So we got like somewhere between now and two months it's gonna come out. So we got a little time, right? We got some time. But he dropped a lot of useful information. Let's head over to the PC here and let's look at so, let's look at some things here and let me kind of break everything down for you. So man, I just I love this new web page they did, man. It has like the cloud. I feel like this is blue with like thunder, man. This thing just this is amazing. I love it. I just had to show that real quick. But we're talking about proof of useful work, right? For like AI rendering, compute. You know what I mean? Doing stuff for geologists, scientists, I mean, researchers, I mean, anything, you name it, right? It, it's all different levels of compute. And obviously, I think the work from from how he kind of explained it is, is, is it's going to vary from GPU to GPU where some may be good, some may be bad. But I think what everybody's going to look for, I mean, at least from my perspective as a miner is going to be that sweet spot where it's it's not the best at this it's not the best at this one but it's kind of just the great at everything right like the all around you know one that just performs well on everything but it's not the best right so if we come over to a ai like rendering or a deep uh, learning machine actual server from nvidia which is this is essentially what they're going to be competing with right is you're you're talking servers like this this is 52 grand this does two petaflops right now it has 16 <laughs> nvidia v100 v100 this is just absolutely a monster and i'm sure if 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 you had this server and you benchmarked it on you know on when the benchmark comes out for flux it, it, it would just score just crazy numbers right but this this isn't feasible for people like me and you as miners, we're always trying to like build things and and um, you know, you know, uh, dollar cost into things and stuff like that. So, so I, I I see that some people may or may not participate in proof of useful work. Um, your octo miners won't be able to participate. Your typical mining rigs probably won't be able to participate. But if you have a gaming computer, right, which you probably already use daily. You already have a, a 16 time slot, right? So you could use your, your desktop PC, right? Um, maybe when, you know, when you're at work and you're not home and you're sleeping or whatever, right? You could definitely use the proof of useful work for that. But some jobs may be longer than others. So something that Jeff Key did mention, and I think everybody needs to take into account, is I think this is going to work a little bit like the flux nodes, where let's say you get a job and that job is to render this thing, uh, a protein or whatever it is, right? And it's going to take two weeks, okay? And you have to leave your computer on for those two weeks. Can't go off and it must stay rendering, right? And you can't use it. So that's something else to consider, right? Because this is what will happen. If you turn it off or take it off that, you're going to go back to the back of the line and not be paid. And something else to consider is, is let's say it goes on for two months, that's two months worth of electricity that you will have to upfront, you know, for this AI rendering, right? So um, just to kind of put that in perspective, and if you disconnect at any time, um, they're gonna have to pick up a new worker to take your place, from my understanding, 
and then it's going to have to re uh depending upon how they coded it if they coded like some spots to like save the epoch and stuff if it would be able to continue the work or it's going to have to start the entire render over which would then take an additional two months right so this it's it's going to be very tricky at first so just know that you may have to upfront some of your uh electric costs so keep that in mind moving forward that was a good p piece of information that was asked last night so um like i said be sure to watch that saturday night live stream now obviously people can't afford stuff like this right this is just unreasonable right so if you have a spare pc you, you're, you're you're already in right you could put your graphics card in that pc and um and you can put another one in, right? So usually, usually if you have a time 16, if you put another GPU in another PCI, PCIe slot down below, what it's going to do is it's going to cut in half, right? Which means that they're going to be two times eights, which you could still participate. So what would typically happen is, is you would be essentially, you would be mining. And then let's say there was work, you, your system would benchmark and then it would have the benchmarks. And if it qualified for said work, it would go off the chain and go do the work. He did. He did. Um, he did say that it would be. Um, you know, you are going to need some more resources, though. So just just think about this, though. This server, this thing is like packed full of RAM. It has a terabyte and a half of RAM. I mean, um, it has. Uh, this one has particularly dual Xeons, which is twenty four cores, forty eight threads. So, to to me, from the in information I gathered, you're going to need lots of RAM. You will need lots of threads. Um, you'll need a decent amount of storage. I'm going to say preferably NVMe is, is what I would go. I mean, NVMe is cheap now, right? You can get like two terabytes for like $100. So it doesn't make sense to get uh, slow storage. So this this venture in proof of useful work, it, it, it can set you back. I want to move over and like um, talk about this other platform um, that's called Vast.ai. Okay, and some of you may or may not even know that about this particular platform or that it even exists. So we're over here at Vast.ai, and I'm using this as an example, right, to kind of give you guys some better understanding about this, about some of the system requirements you may or may not need, right? So let's just go to the top guy here. Right, he has one forty ninety, obviously because that it does lots of compute. Right, it does about one hundred and three teraflops. But if you look at some of these other specs here, he has a very good, I'm gonna say, symmetrical, you know, upload and download. He has about five hundred and twenty four down, six hundred forty up. His NVMe is about twenty four hundred megabytes a second. He has an Epic seventy four oh two, which means that it's a second gen Epic. Um as well as as well as he has ram right so it looks like he has 32 gigs of ram now i think it's going to depend on how how many gpus you have is how much ram you're going to need because obviously the memory is going to be working in conjunction with the gpu i just i, I got this because i went here because i want to give you guys an idea of how this is going to work now this DLP perf um, score here is their deep learning performance score on this particular machine. And obviously, as you have more compute power, obviously the score increases, right? He's at like 80.6. And this guy down below him that has two 4090s obviously is about like double his, his score because he has a double the compute, right? So it makes kind of sense. And then there is a reliability score. Now, Jeff Key did go into that there would be some kind of a score and and obviously this first initial you know thing that's coming out is just for testing and to benchmark things and just see how it works kind of right get people familiar with how everything works so there will be uh, i'm assuming some kind of reliability score because they are offering a service right so you are going to want to have good uptime not let that machine go down you're essentially like I um, like I said in the Saturday Night Live. You're going to be your own data center in providing this type of compute power, right? And I think that if your score got too low, you're going to hurt yourself, and maybe you won't be accepted for as many jobs. So that's going to be something that you need to take in consideration. If you lose power a lot, if you lose internet a lot, um, if any of those are unstable, you you know you may want to consider maybe 
having your machine maybe hosted elsewhere um, because reliability is key in this type of service that you're going to be offering. The reason, a second reason I also came over here to Vast AI is, and I, you know, in conjunction with, with Flux, right? And let's just say proof of use of work doesn't work out. I'm just saying hypothetically, I believe it's going to work out, right? But let's just say you bought some hardware and it, it doesn't work out. You could always come over here to Vast AI and it's an open marketplace and you could repurpose your hardware. Cause that's my whole thing is, is when I buy hardware, I wanna know what else I could do to it. So one, you could repurpose it, go to this marketplace here that already exists, right? Or you could, and, and here's, here's other things you could do. You could still use that server for other things, right? Depending upon obviously how many resources you have, whether you build a server or a gaming PC, obviously if you build a server with lots of RAM and lots of hard drive space and have lots of cores and threads, you could still use that um, server for other things. It could have your Flux nodes on it. You could have a Plex server. You could do whatever you want, even while you're doing compute, depending upon how many resources you have, right? So if we come down and look though, most of these are gonna be server grade CPUs. And the reason is, is because that's gonna offer you the most PCIe lanes, which is very key in this particular thing that Flux is trying to tackle, which is AI rendering and stuff like that. You do see that this guy has a core uh, i5-10400F, but he only has one GPU. It's probably in the time 16 slot. So, but you can see here though, that his DLP perf, even though he has this 4090 and he has two gig internet, his, his actual deep learning performance score is less because he, he is bound to how many actual cores and threads that he has on his system because this is obviously a desktop cpu so there's going to be lots and lots of factors that play into um proof of useful work you're going to have to consider your cpu you're going to have to consider cores and threads you're going to have to consider um obviously the speed of those cores and threads you're going to have to consider the ram right whether you're using ddr3 or ddr4 and obviously the speed of the ram it's going to be dependent upon also you're going to need good upload and download once again this may not be for you if you do not have a great symmetrical upload and download so i know people have struggled with flux nodes due to bandwidth requirements but this will also be a bandwidth requirement um, I don't know what the minimum is going to be. They haven't announced that yet. But to me, it's like more the merrier. If you have fiber at your house like I do, where I have symmetrical fiber, you'll be just fine. But for people who are on Doxis who have like 1.2 gig down and only like 30 up, right? You're, you're going you're gonna to struggle. And people may not want to use you because obviously you can't pass the information fast enough with some of these other bandwidth you know um that of you know obviously people offering faster bandwidth than you so that's something to consider you have to consider hard drive speed uh, <clears throat> um, the size of the hard drive so it's not just it's not just traditional mind we're like okay this gpu we could we could tune this to get this many hashes that's not it anymore there is so many other factors right and you notice that most of these people are using um, bigger GPUs, 3090s, 4090s. Now you don't necessarily have to use that. We got some A4000s down here. For right now, um, which I believe Flux also said last night in there, in the stream is, is this is gonna be geared for NVIDIA right now at first. And the reason for that is gonna be for the CUDA, right? Um, NVIDIA is, the unfortunate truth right now for AMD is that it's not as good for the deep learning um, service here that you're trying to uh, offer to people. NVIDIA is is better. So that that is a key deciding factor. This is that you're going to have to use NVIDIA. So if you have some NVIDIA cards, great. If you don't, now I do know that there is some 6000 series that have introduced CUDA in the later generation cards of AMD, like six and 7,000 series, but I don't know if Flux will offer support for them in the beginning. I don't believe so. I believe it's NVIDIA only. So looking at this and getting some information here, right? Because I'm just comparing this, right? We don't know anything about proof of useful work, but if this is something similarly that they're trying to do, 
right? Um, which is either get jobs. Obviously, it's not going to, I don't know if it's going to be an open marketplace. I don't know if it's just going to be by job and then they're just going to take all the resources from everybody and just work on that job, right? To tackle it faster instead of being like an open marketplace like this. Um, but what it, what this does is, is it gives us information about what type of equipment we need, right? So I've kind of given you a rundown of some of the things that you may or may not need, right? For this possible, you know, proof of useful work. This is, this is not guaranteed. This is not like they've come out and gave, you know, defined certain guidelines and stuff like that. Sure, you could still participate with a regular desktop gaming PC if you have one, two GPUs, maybe even three. But if you're gonna want to build like a AI rig, right? like of eight GPUs or something like that, you're going to need lots of threads. You will need lots of RAM and other things like that. So with that in mind, let me show you the two rigs that I'm going to be doing myself. And, um, and then I'm going to be, you know, I'll be obviously recording my success with these said rigs that I, that I plan on having. So <clears throat> let's go over to the first one, which is one that I currently, um, I own right now. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to go check out my um, one of my servers I have, which is a PowerEdge R730. So this particular PowerEdge I got from Mr. Geek of All Trades. In a, in a trade we did, I traded him a mini doge for this particular server. So shout out to Geek of All Trades, man. Great guy, great channel, great content. Be sure to go check him out. So this server here, it uses, um, it uses Xeons. It does have a couple GPUs in it. It has two uh, grid K1 GPUs, but they are much, much older. They have 16 gigs of DDR3. They don't even do teraflops, they do gigaflops. So these things are pretty like, they're like antiques, right? They go for like 20 bucks on eBay. Nothing, not great, right? But it has fiber cards in it. Um, and I did put, um, you know, some eight uh, terabyte, um, Seagate ESCO drives in it, but I can also put an NVMe in there, which is important. So these are going to be our CPUs though, which are going to be, it's, it's dual uh, E5 2695 version threes um, that are 14 cores and 28 threads each. So that's a total of 28 cores and 56 threads. So important, right? Lots of threads. We need lots of threads. I also have a lot of memory for it as well. I have 256 gigs of RAM, which I think will be more than sufficient. Now, granted, this is, um, now this is also DDR4. It is a lower speed of DDR4. So that's something to be, you know, I'm sure memory speed will play a, I'm not gonna say a huge factor, but a small factor, right, of, of performance, because this is 2133. So this will be my first um, rig, AI rig, that I'm gonna be testing on, right? Because I have it. So it is a uh, 2U um, uh, server. So it's gonna be a little challenging to get some GPUs in there. Um, I'm probably going to use things like A2000s and, 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 and things like that, small GPUs in this I could, I could do. So I could disable the, the, the top case there and, you know, put a bunch of GPUs on top of it and do it that way. But from a cooling perspective, that's just, I feel that would just be awful. So something to also note, though, from AI rendering, and this is going to be a huge factor in this as well, is... When you're using cards like 4090s or 4080s, 3080s, A2000s, they are gonna be using their TDP. So if the TDP is 350 watts, that's what it's gonna use. It's just gonna be like as if it was gaming. So now <clears throat> that's not to say though, that you couldn't undervolt this, the GPUs with like MSI Afterburner or something like that. But if you undervolt too far, you're gonna create instability which in this game right now, it's very key for stability. Because if you crash too many times and then your score goes down as far as reliability, who knows, maybe you might not get picked up for jobs. So maybe the key isn't like, what I wanna say is tuning the cards down properly, 
because that's going to be dependent upon Silicon Laundry because you're talking a card at TDP for extended periods of time, right? Days, weeks, who knows, maybe even months. No idea, right? That's going to be a huge factor in Silicon Laundry. So I would, to me, leave them at stock and I would try to find the card that gives you, like I said, the decent score that's not great. You know, it's not the best, but it's decent and it's kind of a low wattage card. Right. It's going to have to have the best of both worlds. And there's definitely going to be lots of testing and everybody's going to be trying all different kinds of GPUs. So it'll be interesting to see. Because right now, I think the 3070 is to me like everybody's go to for mining. Right. It's like it's, it's not the best. It's it's not the worst. It's just like it's a great all around card for everything. Right. It's just a it's just a it's just a solid performer all around. Right. It's a jack of all trades, but master of none. Right. So that's kind of what we're going to have to find so that's kind of what we're going to have to find here in these ai rigs right for offering these ai services so this is it's pretty much like we're starting all over like this is like the first day of mining right like we're we're exploring this and we're just going to see how everything performs so i'm super excited so this is going to be my first rig i'm going to test with some smaller cards like data center cards you know a4000s a2000s things like that that's what i'm going to be testing in here now let's move on to the next one that i i am ordering which um you know some people can either follow suit or not now this is where it's gonna it could get costly depending upon the avenue that you travel down for this next particular path that you could go for proof of useful work and and, and once again i i don't even know if this thing even works or not right this is coming from china this is a used Epic. This is a um, 7401P Epic. It is 24 cores and 48 threads. Um, it can have a max, this is board revision number two, which means it can have a max of two terabytes of RAM on the single board right here. It has one NVMe spot on there. Um, so this this has lots of lanes. Um, it, I feel like this is like, like we're building like a but this is like the budget mining rig like motherboard here almost you know what i mean so i mean for 340 bucks to get an epic and the board i'm gonna say is a fairly decent deal now do i plan on putting this in a server case i'm gonna say no because if you're gonna get a 4u server case it's those cases will be expensive so i'm gonna say they're for a good one it's gonna be between I would say anywhere it's and it's going to be a huge range because it's going to depend on what kind of quality you want and obviously what kind of you know server case you go with but it's going to be anywhere from 300 to a thousand bucks right it's 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 a huge swing because you can get like a cheap roswell or something like that and do this or you could get like a nice like super micro case like it's just there's all different kinds of cases and all different kinds of prices so it's a, it's a huge swing you can even get more expensive than that so um, I'm choosing not to do a case. I'm going to do a mining rig build, right? So, but my first test, um, and you will notice on this car, on this particular motherboard that it has three, three, it has three, three, uh, it has three full, uh, times 16 slots. And these other three are times eight slots. So, um, I will have three full and three at, at times eight, um, in operation. So my, my plan is at first, right, in, in this AI rig build, is I wanna just put three GPUs down on the motherboard, right? I'm just gonna stick them on there because I'd say they're decently spaced, right? And I'm just, I'm just gonna put the motherboard just like on a mining frame and, and, away, and away I go. So that's gonna be probably the f you know what I'm gonna do at first. And then if you wanna add more GPUs, right, the thing you're gonna to have to do is, is you're gonna to have to get a times eight to times 16 adapter, and that's gonna to have to be at like, um, at the same gen speed as the board right here. So this bo this particular board is from Supermicro and is the H11 SSL-I. So these are all PCI gen three slots. Um, and it has the one obviously M.2. So this is the board I'm going with here. It is the revision two, so be careful. There's there's the first revision, so um, don't get tripped up. Also, I don't know if this is true or not. I've I've I'm, I don't have experience with Epics in particular, but I heard that 
once the epic is seated in here that is kind of paired with the motherboard i don't know if that's true or not so i'm just buying the cpu and the board together as one just to make sure that everything works right i want the cpu in it so um i'm also going to be sending a message to the seller because it says it's used it doesn't state whether or not it's in running condition or not so before i buy this i will message the seller and say hey does this does this does this thing is it operational obviously you're going to have to buy a heat sink because it doesn't have one on there so this is the fp3 socket for this particular generation of epic i don't know if the socket changes or not i'm like i said i'm not like an I'm, usually I've, I've never bought epics so um but i did find this noctua which is a sp3 socket and it also does thread rippers so this noctua i think will be plenty enough to cool this thing it's about 90 bucks a little expensive for i mean that's about what a noctua goes for you can spend 100 bucks on the cooler 340 bucks on the motherboard and cpu and then i'm going to get 256 gigs of ram and the ram i found which is now i have to scroll again why, why, why am i looking for my ram again that makes no sense right here is going to be this atec 256 gig uh ddr4 2400 uh ecc rdim uh server memory so this is pretty much the cheapest one i found so as far as ddr4 memory man it could get um it can get it could get as expensive as you want it to be right it, you can see here it can go anywhere from 300 to 500 to six seven hundred dollars so if you want to continue, you know, obviously you're going to have to use full um, PCIe Gen 3 um, cables for this. This is going to be, these are the cables I'm actually talking about. They're pretty long. They're a decent length. So, but they're kind of expensive though. So this is, goes from um, uh, a times uh, 8, 8X to a 16X slot. And it is uh, PCIe Gen 3, but as you see, these are can get quite expensive very quickly, $30 each. So if I use the other three here, it's going to cost me roughly another 100 bucks. So we are getting into the realm of servers for AI, right? This is this, this kind of horsepower, if you're going to be building rigs, this is going to be necessary. It will cost you more money, but it's not like you wouldn't be able to participate with your gaming PC and, and things like that. You will be able to participate. Just know that you may have to leave the computer on for days or even weeks or months at a time. So make sure that if you are going to be using this, that it's something that you can live without. Um, obviously, you can use your own hardware at home. You'll just be limited on how many actual PCIe lanes that you have. So if you want to build a rig, you're going to need something like server grade that has lots of PCIe lanes. So that's just the nature of the beast, unfortunately. Now, one thing I do want to bring up is going to be a profitability at hash rate dot no for 3070 is here. You're making like a penny right now. Lithium or Caspa, right? That's what you're doing right now. Probably triple mining Caspa. Here's Ergo Caspa right here. It says you're actually losing eight cents a day depending upon your electrical rate. So we'll just say your revenue for the day though is 21 cents. That's how much you're generating, right? If you come over here to Vast AI, let's, let's just see if somebody's on the 3070s. And they are. So it looks like it's about 10 to 12 cents an hour is what it generally is going for. Let's just do it at the low end, right? We'll just do... You know, this was a 0 0.013 times 24 hours. Yeah, you're making like $2.47, right? You know, in a day. What we, what we need to do is now is go to, we need to find the 3070 TDP because that's what it's going to be using. It's about 220 watts, okay? So remember that number, $2.47, okay? So 220 divided by a thousand times 24 times 0.1 for your electric. I'm just using that as a rough number. This part here where you put 0.1, put whatever your electrical is, right? And this is what it's going to cost you every day to run that 3070 at that particular 
rate of electricity at 220 watts. Okay, so we're at 0.528. We're going to take $2.47 minus uh, 0 0.528. And that's how much you're going to profit. If you were doing AI rendering at Vast AI with your GPUs right now. So it's actually much more profitable to AI render with your GPUs. So um, now can everybody do this? You know, I, I, I don't know how Vast AI works. I'm, maybe you have to email them or, you know, set up some kind of account. And obviously they're gonna have to do some benchmark testing and other things like that. I have no idea how it works, right? From that standpoint though, this could be more profitable on the flux uh, proof of useful work than it is for mining, right? But you won't always be doing a job though. You could be mining and then it pulls you off to do a job for two weeks, puts you back to mining. So kind of interesting how this is gonna work. I'm really, really interested um, because obviously these guys here who want on advanced AI, if their GPUs don't have work, they just sit idle. So that's something to keep in mind. So it is burning electricity right now as being idle, waiting for somebody to want the work. This is kind of my, this is my take on the whole proof of um, useful work thing. Those are gonna be my strategies. I'm gonna use my R730 I got from GOAT, and I'm also going to be um, purchasing this Epic uh, uh, equipment here to also test with that too. So that way, because obviously there's going to be performance differences, obviously between the Xeons and the Epics. Um, so there's so many contributing factors in pr uh, proof of useful work that like, you know, you have your CPU you need to worry about, how many threads you have, how much RAM you have, your RAM speed, your how much storage you have, your storage speed, your upload and download. There's going to be a huge, huge thing here um, when the testing does come. There's going to be, I believe, lots of content of people putting things out, testing all different, you know, variations of GPUs. And obviously there's going to be all kinds of builds for, you know, motherboards and, you know, CPUs. And, and, and there's going to be a sweet spot, right? There's going to be the sweet spot versus, you know, like the budget where it's going to give you the best bang for the buck and stuff like that. And everybody's going to be searching for that, right? I think the... To me, as far as my two machines that I'm going to be going with, I think the Epic is probably probably going to outperform my Xeons by far. So I think that that, that machine, when it benchmarks with its memory and, and the Epic and everything that's going to be on board with that particular rig, um, is going to benchmark higher than even if I use the same GPU. Let's say I just use like a... I don't know, an A2000, right, or whatever, right? A2000 or A4000, because that's what kind of will fit inside of that, you know, that other server case for the R730. I think the benchmark scores will be higher. It, it, the only configuration changes is going to be the actual server itself, right? Obviously, CPU and all that motherboard stuff will change. So I think the Epic will outscore the R730. Guys, make sure you guys go back, watch that Saturday Night Live stream. Please go watch it. There was lots and lots of questions, lots of good questions were asked, um, lots of information um, that you guys can gain from that Saturday Night Live. I know it's a long watch, it's like two hours, but so anyways, guys, this is Money King giving you the most hashes, and I'll see you next time.